Shalom, Yeshua, giving all praise and glory to the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's worthy to be praised for everything. Hello, Yah. Hello, Yah. Hello, Yah. To the Most High. As always, we start off with Colossians 3 and 17. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. By Hashem, Mashiach, Yahushua. Give me thanks to the Most High and the Father. By Hashem, Mashiach, Yahushua. So all that we say and do is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior, of Mashiach, Yahushua. We give thanks to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob been the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel for everything. We worthy to be praised for everything. And Lord Yah, to his glory is the holy name. You know, at this time, you know, I want to um I was contemplating on um, you know, the times that we're in right now, and it's like a lot of people don't really recognize that uh things have changed in this world. It's never gonna be the same. And, you know, we could be ending, the time that we're in now could be very, very close to actually being the very end times. And looking into that, you know, there's a lot of prophecies that, not many, many, but there are prophecies that have to happen for this to go down. And certain things, you know, the most I asked and certain things that he gave the answer to in these scriptures, in these last days. But we know that we are in a time of Jacob's trouble, but the most I say he's gonna bring us out of it. He's gonna bring us out of it. And I think the problem with uh, what we see in this, in this world right now is the fact of whether uh, the same thing that's going on with uh, so like you, the same thing that's going on with um, the things that have been done to us as a people, the children of Israel, from captivity to now, we still hollering no justice, no peace, right? So I think the problem is thinking that, oh, the same thing that they done gonna happen to them. So we gotta look at the scriptures and get clarification and understanding first and foremost because this is our guide. This is the way of life. It's the way that we know that we can follow and the mysteries are here, right here in these scriptures. So go to Acts, the first chapter first and foremost, so no one gets it twisted at all thinking that they can call the time of this when he's telling you this in Acts 1 and 7. He said, and he said unto them, but they asked the question, why he said unto them this in verse 6. When they therefore would come together, they asked of him, saying, O Mashiach, I was shy. Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So that right there let you know that the kingdom is coming to the Israelites to come. But they're in the Roman Empire at this time. And he said, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know, or me or you or anyone else to know, the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. To the most has put the times and the seasons of the end in his own power. So the most high is the one that knows. No one else knows. Don't let no man say it's gonna happen this day, that day, whatever. We know that these prophecies have to happen. And no man can stand in the way of the most high's word coming to be true. You know? But he said in uh, Matthew 24 and 22, he said, and except those days should be shortened, the days we live in now should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. 
But for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. You see? Look at uh, Second Ezra 2 and 13. Second Ezra 2 and 13. For the elect sake, the days shall be short. Before we go there, we got to go see the elect are. He said, for the elect sake. Because people can think just because uh, you went to church and you think that uh, you're a Gentile grafted in, that you're the elect. But that's not what the scriptures say. <coughs> Scripture doesn't say that can't back that up with the scriptures. Look at uh, Isaiah 45, the 45th chapter, the fourth verse, defines who the elect are. But you said for the elect's sake, the times we in now shall be short. So it's telling you, for Jacob, this is Isaiah 45 and 4, 45th chapter, the fourth verse. It said for Jacob's my servant's sake and Israel mine elect I have even see I've called thee by thy name so Israel the Israelites are the most high's elect that's why when you read Matthew 24 mind you there is no New Testament when I'm saying I walked the earth in the flesh and he said in Matthew 24 and 22 and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved he ain't shorten the days in the time we live in now. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So it said in uh, 2 Ezra, let's get 6 and 9 first. So give you a clear indication who will be ruling in the end of the world and who will be ruling next. 2 Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world. So Esau has been ruling in the end of the world. Esau represents the forefather of the so-called Caucasian race. Indigenous, I might say. For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. That's why they asked him the question in Acts, the first chapter, the sixth verse. Are you going to restore the kingdom again to Israel? And he told them only the most I know. Look at uh, Matthew 24 again. And uh, verse 36. Matthew 24 and 36. It says, But of the day, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Only the most I know. Don't nobody fool you say it's going to be on this day or that day. They don't know. They don't know. They don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. He said, only the most high knows that day. So let's look at uh, 2 Ezra 2 and 13. 2 Ezra 2 13. Second Ezra 2 and 13. Go, and you shall receive, pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Hear that? The kingdom is already prepared for you, Yasharala. He said, watch. Okay? So the kingdom, remember, look. Look. Go to uh, St. John 14th chapter. He said the kingdom is already prepared for us. Go to St. John, the 14th chapter. Let's start at verse 1. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in the Most High, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Not like what we have here on this earth. He said in the Most High's house are many mansions. He said, oh, um, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Today's supposed to be the day 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Okay? So that's what we're waiting on. He said, where he's at, we're going to be able to be there also. That's, that's, that's the good news. Very good news, you see. So, when we look at uh, going to uh, say a, a place is already prepared for us, we just have to get ourselves together to be worthy to be in that place that's prepared for us. You see. It's been prepared. It's just a matter of us, you know, knowing the steps to be able to be worthy that the Most High can allow us to be a part of, of His kingdom that have many mansions and streets paved with gold. Look at our Second Ezra 8, the 8th chapter. 51st chapter. He told Ezra, he said, But understand thou for thyself, and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. Those that's going to be like Ezra. Who didn't, didn't, uh, told you in verse 48. He said, And this also thou art marvelous before the Most High, and that thou hast humbled himself. He humbled himself as he become a thee, and hast not judged thyself. Worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. That's marvelous in the eyes of the Most High. For many great misery shall be done to them that in the latter time, and we live in the last days, shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. So pride is going to really be the fall of a lot of people. They're going to be miserable. Whether you're miserable now, you're going to be miserable if you don't humble yourself. And have a broken and contrite spirit before the Most High. Listen. He said because people walking in great pride right now. You know, they got gay pride, Teddy, right? I mean, they got pride. People like you, you stepping on my pride. Especially the younger generation. Most High say he hate a poor man that's prideful. You got no reason to be prideful. For what? What do you really have that you can really say that you can really do anything for the majority of the millions of people of our people that needs to be dealt with what do you have you have nothing except for a bunch of mouth a bunch of talk that's what we have but the most important talk that we should have words come from my mouth should be from these precepts the, the scriptures listen to what it said remember my second child just told us he's going to prepare a place for us and, it's, and we just read where the place is already prepared listen to what it says Verse 51, but understand thou for thyself, Ezra, and seek out the glory of such as be like thee. So that's a order of commandment that I heard loud and clear. Say, seek out the order of those that be like Ezra. Because they say, gonna be great miseries in these last days because people were walking in pride. He humbled himself. And when you read about him, him and Daniel and all the rest of the prophets of status, that the most allowed to have a book. They humbled themselves. It was about we have sinned. He didn't count himself as one of the righteous. But you can look at scripture. You go, I can pull the scripture. You can pull the scriptures all you want. And say that the most high going to make sure that you're going to be. Uh, you're going to be there. For whatever it is that you're doing. No good and well you ain't right. The most high said dare not make thyself one of the number. If you make yourself one of the number, what number are you? Or the 144,000? Or the 100, or the, the uh, one-third of the 12 tribes Israel? Which one are you? That's what I always get, silence. Comment. Let me know which one you are. You got one-third, say we more numerous than the sands in the sea and the stars in the sky. But which one are you? Or the one-third of the 12 tribes Israel that's going to be redeemed? These are solutions, you know. I'm just giving it to you as the Spirit has brought it. This is what it says. 2 Andrews 8 and 51. 
but I'm sent out for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. Like Ezra. Humble himself before the Most High. He said, Unless you want to be miserable, catch the misery of the Most High and say, Look, for many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world. Why? Because they have walked in great pride. You gotta understand, brothers. Yeah, we Israelites, we the chosen. But the most I said, dare not make thyself one of the number. Ezra did, Daniel did. He prayed, we have sinned. We have sinned. Forgive us for our sins, including yourself. But if you can say it and you don't mean it, the most I know. You know, hard to see with all things are definitely wicked. Who can know it? The most I know it. He know our, he know our minds, how we think. So we ain't get away with nothing. This eye is 10,000 times brighter than the sun beholding all the ways of men and even the secret things. So we ain't get away with nothing. That's why I said, but this is promised to us. Verse 52, those just like Ezra, those that think, you know, that they're not all that. For unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. A new tree of life, y'all. Tree of life is planted. Remember, we put the flaming swords around the tree of life. So no one can have it to get to the tree of life. That's why we look at the tree of life, you look at the trees of men, you look at that Mashiach Yabba Shai being the, 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 the way, the truth, and the life. You know? He told you, hey, no man comes to the Father but by me. So he gave, so you can eat of the tree of life. So he put that flaming swords around him. So now who is the stumbling block? Come on, Yabba Shai. It's stumbling block. Put those flames of soul, but he said he's planted. He's ready for us. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He's ready for us. For the you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. You know, the time to come is prepared. Esau is the end of the world. This world that we're in now. We, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it forever and ever and ever. So what's that say? For unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plenteousness is made ready. A city is built and rest is allowed. Yeah, perfect goodness and wisdom. Perfect righteousness. Goodness is keeping the laws of the both side and wisdom is proper application of knowledge. How to apply this knowledge in your life forever and ever and ever. The root of the root of evil is sealed up from you. you hear that? The root of evil is sealed up from you. Evil began, tell you in uh, 1 Maccabees 9th chapter, the first verse, first chapter, the ninth verse, it tells you. When Alexander died, set up his four generals, it says, and after his death, after Alexander the death, Alexander the Greek death, they all put crowns upon themselves. They came, they had power, rulership, and authority. What's that book you've been reading about? It says, And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. So, they were evils multiplied in the earth. When they came into power. So he's telling you in verse 53 of 2nd Ezra 8 chapter, the root of evil is sealed up from you. So the root is the ones that bring forth the tree. So the foundation of evil, the ones that's evil, gonna be sealed up, done away with. Not even being in existence around us. The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and the moth is hid from you. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Sorrows are past, no more tears. And in the end it showed the treasure of immortality. Living forever and ever. That's what he promised us. So, we just have to really prepare ourselves and look at what these end times are going to contain. That's why, go to, uh, let's do a little prophecy. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah.
Jeremiah, since he said Esau is the end of the world, let's go to Jeremiah the 49th chapter and look at verse 7. Concerning Edom, that's the biblical name for the so-called Caucasian. I say indigenous so-called Caucasian people. Thus said the most high power of hope, power of armies, power of angels. Is wisdom no more in Teman? Teman is, was uh, like where the wise men were, in fact, the capital city. Is counsel prayers from the pudent, from the wise? Is their wisdom vanished? Says their wisdom vanished? Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep on the habits of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him. The time that I will visit him. You know, he's going to bring the calamity of Esau upon him the time that the Most High is going to visit him. If great gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some bleeding grapes? Would they leave some grapes? If thieves by night, they will destroy till they have enough. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places. You know that? So they made him bare. So he uncovered his secret places. And he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled. You want to say he ain't going to be able to hide himself. Even though they dig deep down in the, the earth. Have their little secluded secret places in the earth. He said. And he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled. He had his seed is spoiled. I mean, the species he's gonna be, you know, you ever smell spoiled milk? Spoiled. And his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. This he's not gonna be. Existed. They say, leave thy fatherless children. I mean, that, that's what he said. Fatherless children mean that the men of the children are gonna die. Leave thy fatherless children, I will preserve them alive. The children, he's going to preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. Widows mean the husband has been put to death. Let thy widows trust in me. For thus said the most high power, Behold, thy, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have surely drunken. Hear that? He said, they that judgment was not to drink of the cup have sure, assuredly drunken. And I doubt he that shall altogether go unpunished. So you drank of the cup of getting this Bible and bringing forth religions and allowing them to go out and lying on the Bible. You can't deny that because... You put yourself in there as the Most High, as a Mashiach Yahushai. You painted this picture, Caesar Borgia, the Borgia family. You said you was, you was the Most High. You was the Mashiach Yahushai, right there in the picture, the Borgia family. You said you was the Most High here, right here. Open up the Holy Bible. First page you see, there you are. So you saying you God, people say God, they talk about you. And all people believe it. I've heard them say, yeah, they believe the white man's coming back to deliver them, to save them from heaven. It's all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible, you're here. Your pictures are here. You said you was not supposed to drink of the cup, but you drank of it. So to everybody that you was the most high, you was the Mashiach Yavashai. So, and it's in your Bibles. So looking at this, what it is that need to be said, according to thus said the most high, thus said the most high, behold, verse 12, they, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunk it. And art thou he that shall altogether be go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. Drink of the punishment of the Most High. For I have sworn by myself. Most High said he has sworn by himself. 
said the most high that Bajra shall become a desert. That's the capital city of Edom. A reproach, a disgrace, a waste, and a curse. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. He said, I have heard a rumor from the Most High. An ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather you together and come against her and rise up to the battle. That's when Gamal Nassau, when he went there and set up uh, your state of Israel, he said, Hey, the Jews left here black. I will not accept them coming back here as Edomites. Say, for lo, I, have, I will make thee small among the heathen and despised among men, it's telling you. Why? Because, you know, you got to look at, look at it, I mean, on the real, you know, I remember uh, looking at soccer games and you would hear the people chatting in the uh, stands because, you know, we didn't really get a chance to play soccer, you know, it was a sport that Esau had control. They would say, go home, great Satan. Look it up. It would say, go home, great Satan. It said, for lo, I have made thee small among the heathen and despised among men. You look at even what's going on with uh, what happened with George Floyd at this time. You know, you look at how all the nations looking at America. You know, you're not so big now. They got the news. They got the news, too. They trying to be the police of the world, but it's not going to work for everybody. Because somebody's going to say, no, you don't tell us what to do because we got the news, too. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen and despise among men. Thy terribleness have deceived thee. He would say, Thy terribleness have deceived thee. And the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwelleth in the cleft of the rock. Come on. Caucasians. That, why do they call themselves Caucasians? Because they come from the clefts of the rocks, the, the Caucasus mountain range between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea in South Georgia, Russia. As it says, O thou that dwelleth in the clefts of the rock, that holdeth the height of the hill, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from this, said the Most High. Say, also Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of what? Sodom and Gomorrah? Mosai burnt those cities down. Burn them down. I mean, and he left remnants so you can see. It was a city there. And it's still a burn. That material that's on there. As, the, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof. Said the Most High, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. He letting you know, man. So ain't nobody going to live there. Verse 20, it says, Therefore hear the counsel of the Most High, that he has taken against Edom, and his purposes, that he has purpose against the inhabitants of Teman. That's wherever their capital cities are. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Hear that? The least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. Hear that? There'll be so much destruction on this earth, say the earth will be moved, shaken at the noise of their fall. At the cry, the noise thereof shall was heard in the Red Sea. Ooh. He said, Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Bajra. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her plagues. You hear what it says? The mind of the mighty men of Edom be as a, a woman's mind in her pains. The contractions, she having them contractions having a baby. Say that's one of the worst pains that a woman could ever feel. So look at uh, Psalms 50th chapter in verse 16. Because the most I said, what do he say? 
in uh, Jeremiah 49 and 12, for thus said the Most High, Behold, thy whose day whose judgment was not to drink of the cup hath shall surely drunk it. Hath surely drunk it. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. This is what he told us. Or the salt. 50 and 16. Psalms 50 and 16. But unto the wicked, the most I said. So we got to find the wicked. The wicked is defined in Job 9.24. Job 9.24 defines the, who the wicked is. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So, let's all look. Revelation 19 to 11 said, My shadow shot coming back to judge and make war. And you cover his face up. Ultimate judge is the most high. I showed you in this Bible. First page, you see yourself. So called white man. The lie that you done told the whole world. So. The wicked covered the faces of the judges there, and he told the 12 apostles, they're going to sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You set it, you set it up with the Borgia family. There's only five people in this picture. The Borgia family. So it says, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges there. If not, where and who is he? If it's not them. Going back to Psalm 50 and 16. It says, but unto the wicked, the so-called white man, the most high said, the Edomites, what hast thou to do to declare my statue? What do you what do you mean declaring his statues? This Bible. I'm trying to bring forth the understanding of this Bible, his statues. Or that thou should have taken my covenant in thy mouth. So he said, What hast thou to do to declare my statue? So we gotta look at hold that gets Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He showed his word unto Jacob. Jacob was the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. His statues unto his statues. When he said, What you do, what do you mean declaring my statues? He said his statues and his judgment unto Israel. The Israelites. That's why he said, What do you mean, man? What hast thou to do? What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou should have taken my covenant in thy mouth? So you see the Psalms 147, 19 says he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgment unto Israel. To the Israelites. Not to the Edomites, but to the Israelites. He have not dealt so with any nation. That's why he's saying, what do you mean declaring my statutes? Say he ain't dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, the punishment for breaking the laws that's come up from Most High, they have not known them. They haven't known them yet. Praise you, the Most High. So it says, going back to Psalms 50 and 16. But unto the wicked, he said, the Most High said, What is thou to do to declare my statutes? And that thou should have taken my covenant in thy mouth? And you done lied to the people who say the covenant is with everybody. The contrary agreement that the Most High made is with everybody. Let's see if it is. Let's first go to Jeremiah 31. 31. Let's see if the covenant is for everyone. We're going to bring it on home. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, said the Most High. That's the future. That I will make a new covenant a new contract, a new agreement with the house of Israel. Let's see if it's Edom. With the house of Israel or any other nation. And with the house of Judah. Israel represents the nine and a half tribes of the northern tribes and Judah represents the three tribes of the southern tribes. Southern kingdom, excuse me. Northern and southern kingdom. Israel is the northern. Judah represents the southern kingdom. The twelve tribes of Israel. Not according to the covenant or the contract of the agreement that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand 
to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, said the Most High. So it ain't going to be the same covenant he said. But this shall be the covenant of the contract of agreement that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Most High, I will put my law in their inward parts. He's going to put his law in our inward parts. We're going to think about his laws because we're going to learn the laws. We're going to live the laws. We're going to apply the laws in our life as we are now. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, write it in our minds so we'll think about what's right and think about what's wrong. And we'll be their power and they shall be my people, the Israelites. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. See, this hasn't happened yet, but we still teach it. So this ain't happening. It says, so lock you. Verse 34, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the most high, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the most high, for I will forgive their iniquity. You will feel forgive our wickedness, the Israelites, and I will remember their sin no more. So he said you'll remember our sin no more. So let's go to the New Testament, which y'all be pushing all the time because you don't know the old most of you don't so you don't go back and forth precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little so let's go to the new test what you believe in you think you believe in it but Hebrews 8 and 8 and to the Christians that believe the same way that they have you believing this to you too it says Hebrews 8 and 8 for finding fault with them he said finding fault with the 12 tribes of Israel he said, Behold, the days come, said the Most High, when I will make a new covenant, a new contract, a new agreement with the house of Israel, the northern tribes, and with the house of Judah, the southern tribes, representing all 12 tribes. You don't see any other nation here. It's the Israelites, Hebrew Israelites. Not according to the covenant that I made with their father. <laughs> oh, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, but my contract agreement, my laws, statute commandments. And I regarded them not, said the most high. Gave us over to the captivity after captivity after captivity. <laughs> oh, excuse me. But it's the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Most High. I will put my laws into their mind. See, we'll be all one people. We're going to be no southern tribe, no northern tribe, no northern tribe, no southern tribe. We're going to be all the house of Israel again, as it was, you know, during the time of King David and King Solomon. King Solomon messed up, so he split the kingdom during the time of his son Rehoboam. It says, I will put my laws into their minds. Same thing we read in Jude, uh, Jeremiah 31, 31 down. And write them in their hearts. Write them in our minds. And I will be to them a power. And they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the most high, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. That's not happening now. You know, nobody really... All the things that's going on, nobody really acknowledging the Most High for what it is you see happening. He say he gonna bring plagues and pestilence and all this on the earth. You see what's happening with the two storms coming in? That's the Most High. You gonna be visited by the Most High? I tell you in Isaiah 29 and 6. Nobody acknowledging him. I give him all the praise and glory for everything. But you want to be evil? Hey, he gonna draw evil to you because he's righteous. But you want all you evil and wicked people? You draw evil and wickedness to you? That's from the Most High. But he's not evil. He created evil for those that want to draw evil too. Because he knows what you're going to do. He said, And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Most High, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. 
for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. See what he's saying? He's going to be merciful to our wickedness, our iniquity. And their sins and their iniquities, wickedness, will I remember no more. And that he said a new covenant, a new contract, a new agreement, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. That's letting us know, hey, he bringing the law of such commandments into us right now. But when we get a chance to, if most high will, we get a chance to be with him, my second side, teaching us of the most high. So I say, for well, I will be merciful. He says, uh, verse 11, and they shall no more, they, they shall they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, know the most high. Hear that? That's what going to be about, know the most high. We ain't teaching about knowing the most high no more. In this time, it's a future. In the kingdom, we ain't going to be teaching about know the most high. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Because my side was shy. It's going to take a thousand years to show us of the most high. Hallelujah. We're going to know. That's why I say we're going to know him from the least to the greatest. Everybody going to know the most high. He's going to be acknowledged for everything. going to be like it is now. So now. He said, going back to uh, Psalms 50, Psalm the 50th chapter, in the 16th verse. He said, but unto the wicked, the most high said, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldst take my covenant in thy mouth? You gonna take my covenant in your mouth? Fuck with the inferno. Listen, no. Seeing thou hate of instruction, seeing thou hate of instruction, and casts my words behind thee. You know? You hate instruction, and you cast the most high's word behind you. Therefore, look at Proverbs 1 and 7. Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the most high is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Say, you hate of instruction. So he's calling you a fool. He's telling you that you hate instruction. So he's calling you a fool because you hate instruction. Can't tell you that what we're telling you is the truth. You can care less. You're going to continue to follow your uh, wicked ways until the end. Fear the most high is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's what he telling you, you're a fool. Because you despise wisdom. That's a wisdom is a proper application of knowledge and instruction. Can't tell you nothing. Can't tell you nothing. So look at uh Romans the second chapter. Romans the second chapter. Romans two and twelve. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish. Without law, so we not you're not under the law. Ain't that what you teach people to say? We not under the law, cause you want them to perish with you. But he said, as many as without law, gonna perish without law. So all you that say we ain't under the law, we ain't gotta follow the Most High.